Oh, buddy, we are so back. We're so back right now. Welcome into the Back to 12 podcast. I'm R.C. Maxfield. The guy next to me, no introduction. One of the best wide receivers in Texas Tech program history. Yes, you see him blushing right now while he drinks his latte here on YouTube because, let's face it, real men drink lattes. But that's Lyle Leong Jr. Lyle, my guy. How you doing, man? Hey, man, doing good. You know, um, doing one lap of honor here with this Under Armour cap. Um, next time y'all see me, man, we'll jump could right be in. Adidas season. It could be Adidas yeah. season. Um, you know, maybe Patty Mahone season, you know, might have a little PM, although, you know, it's hard for me to wear other grown men's gear, but Patty, I support you, man. And, uh, you know, although y'all know how I feel about Adidas, man, uh, all day, I'm a dream about sports. Um, and so, yeah, this is my last tour with my Under Armour cap, bought it, um, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I will be at the garage sale um, for Texas Tech, and I will be <laughs> buying a lot of Under Armour. You know, I tried to I tried to ask my man if I got some stuff free. He told me no. So um, definitely gonna bring my my wallet. I said that I'll only probably equate to about two two shirts, three shirts at max, depending what their clearance is. But you know, I just had a rep one last time, man. It's a sad day for me. Um, you know, I know it's not official yet, but it's still it's sad, man. But I'm glad to be back. Great. On the pod, man, and you know, I'm I'm glad glad to be back, man. There you go. Yeah, and it's gonna be a fun one too because one of the position groups that needed the biggest overhaul for Texas Tech this offseason was the wide receivers. So who better than the guy that is only behind this guy that literally has two emojis to describe his name and is known for the singular greatest catch in maybe college football history? Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um in terms of touchdowns, Lyle, to discuss the wide receiver position for Texas Tech, we will talk about the new arrivals, the comeback ease in terms of, you know, the Koi Aikens of the world, Dre McCrae's. We'll also talk about just the must-watch players who we're most excited to really just watch this season. And then at the very end, you're going to want to stick around. Bold predictions mm. in terms of this Texas Tech wide receiver group. And I'm going to tell you guys this right now, three minutes in. Lyle and I, it feels like we have very different opinions on this wide receiver group. Mm. Um, so I'll start with that. But before we get into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. We'll be picking these football videos back up here soon. I know basketball season has taken over the channel, rightfully so in some degree. I mean, mm -hmm. rightfully so. They had a great year, I think. And obviously the portal is just the wild, wild west right now. It feels like every second of every day I'm getting a text from somebody. Hey, Texas Tech is interested in this guy. It's like, oh, great. All right. Well, let me put everything I'm doing down and go talk about that. But if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech football, Lyle and I will be picking this back up in the summer. And we uh, may have a guest or two lined up. Just letting you know on that front. But let's jump into the new arrivals, Lyle, because as I just mentioned, Golly, you you were you were probably the conductor of the train in terms of I don't want to throw these guys under the bus last year, but in the sense of you were the conductor of something has to change with these wide receivers. Like they're just not good enough in terms of what Texas Tech needs at the wide receiver position. Well, they went out and they they added some pretty good ones. Uh, most notably, five star wide receiver Micah Hudson, who is not participating in spring due to a knee injury. He should be good to go when fall camp opens up. Now, from the portal standpoint, two guys really stand out. Josh Kelly from Washington State, Cam Ward's favorite wide receiver. Cam Ward, now the quarterback down at Miami. Also, you've got Caleb Payday Douglas. And if you only call him Caleb Douglas, I'm going to correct you every time because Payday is a baller-ass nickname. Okay? Yeah. So, he came from Florida, was starting there, got hurt last year. He will be good to go for the Red Raiders. This is actually participating in spring camp now those are the new arrivals okay how do we feel about those guys Lyle you saw that Texas Tech was landing them obviously Micah Hudson was the one we knew about first but just those three guys in general overall thoughts adding them to the wide receiver room for Texas Tech man I think that all of them have played at a high level uh they know they've played against some great people some great competition I think one of those things for me is, like I said, I'm one of those guys that um, is I got to see it to believe it in a sense, because, you know, there is guys that we came in. There's 
uh, guys that were hyped up that didn't live up to it. There are the guys that weren't hyped up that lived up to it. So I think the potential is always there. Like we talked about last year, I'm still, I'm still, I'm not going to say 50, 50, I'm 20, 80. When we bring up guys from smaller schools to, to the bigger levels and expect those same numbers. Now, can they make plays? Absolutely. Do they do great things? Absolutely. But making plays, it's a difference. And um, I can't tell people that enough. It's it, each level is different from, D3 to D2 to D, to to D1 AA to uh, small D1 to power five. It's a difference. So you're going from guys that you're super, you know, um, you might be super fast, faster than at, at that level. When you come here, everybody's fast or everyone's bigger, everyone's stronger. So um, like I said, I think that those guys are, are great additions. I think, you know, Micah, I think he's really, really good. Um Really it's hard not to think that, right? It's hard you not know, to think it. But so are the DBs. Like, so are the DBs that he's about to go against, too. So sure. um, I'm not necessarily like, you know, the same thing we talked about last year, kind of, uh, you know, with Dre. I think Dre's a great receiver, you know, but we talk about it, and it has to do with a lot of elements. But, like, how many times did he blow past everybody? Like, it, it wasn't a lot. Like, does he have the ability? Yeah. So I just – I think it's one of those things, like – is the ability there? Can you do it? Yes. Now, does that happen? Yes. And like I said, it's been very few receivers, especially in Texas Tech with my time, that have had the hype like Crab and came in and actually, boom, did that. The rest, you know, the rest of those guys that came in there, um, you know, minus Jerry Hicks had the hype, was really, really good. Joe Filani, some of those guys. But, you know, a lot of those other guys were people like Robert Johnson. Like, he was quarterback, number one quarterback in Juco when he came and played receiver before he started doing good. So some of these guys, I, I feel like, um, you know, it's good for the change, but I feel like, you know, back in the day, Texas Tech kind of got guys that were not necessarily high guys, not necessarily re receiver type guys that turned in and did a good job, you know. So I'm anxious to see like these high caliber guys with the ratings and how they come in and do. And I think a lot of that comes down to work ethic and kind of, um, you know, growing. Like I said, Mike is going to grow. He's going to go against a 6'2 corner that runs a 4'4 four -four that's strong. And, and I, as a witness, Jimmy Smith, Colorado, put me on the sideline a couple of times before I got my first release off. So I think he's definitely going to have to grow. But is the potential there for those guys? Man, absolutely. Um, those other two guys have shown it, have done it. Uh, but like I said, you know, I feel like the Big 12, and I'll, I'll say this till I'm no longer on this earth, is made for throwing. And, it, and so when you've got a conference that's known for throwing, the defense is going to get DBs that are known for covering. So I think it's I think it's a, a jump every time I tell people that, like in this conference, and just like if a guy transferred, a linebacker transferred from here to the SEC, it's, it's a different world. And you, when you hit sure. that hole, it's going to be a different running back. So I think it's vice versa in this world, uh, in this conference. And I think that those guys are going to take a second to adjust. Um, but I really think it comes down to the craft of their game. How much are they? Um, you know, everyone's out there just, but are they going, are they doing the little things? And we talk about this all the time in the receivers, the little things that make that much of a difference. I learned from crab. Um, and I'll never say that again. I love you crab, but I'll never say that again to where he hears that. But, uh, I did learn a lot of details from him that made a huge, huge difference in my career and helped me, you know, um, catch a few passes. So, um, I think those are the things that it's on them and how, how they want to grow. But I think, they did a great job. I think and you you might, you know, disagree, but I think this is probably bringing in. I don't know if we brought in a better group. Um, oh, that, so we're you know, going to agree. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, okay. as far as as far as like I always tell you, as far as what they what they are supposed to do now, as far yeah. as groups. And I know they haven't got an opportunity, but doing is something different. But as far as like you look at their stats, you look at how fast you look what they're doing. I don't think there's a better group except maybe Falani was a good group, Jerry Hicks. Like, I still say that. I still think, wow. yeah, you know, Jerry Hicks, in my opinion, is the best receiver to ever play at Tex Tech. That's my humble opinion. That's spicy. I, That's spicy. We, we might have to clip that one and put it on the internet in multiple other places. I think, well. I think That's Jerry spicy. Hicks, I think Jerry Hicks is the best receiver to ever play at Tex Tech, my, my humble opinion. Crab is right there. It's not a huge. You give Crab one compliment, and then you're like, "No, nah, that's enough for today." No, I'm just kidding. I love him. He, he's my brother. You know, he came out kicking with me. I love him. He knows that. And, but I just like overall like speed. Um, 
you know, speed and, and height. Like, you know, Hicks is six, six, three, six, four. Um, you know, like Crab is special. And, and there's a lot of things that no one, I don't think anyone will ever do. But like the way Hicks ran, like I bro, like I'm a feel like I'm a route runner and I come out sometimes and look and just be like, is this man real? Like just the fuck catch it. So Fair enough. um, you know, Crab did a lot of amazing things, but you know, I had to spice it up. First time back in a while, I had to spice there it up. There you go. Uh, I, I'll say this. I think this is the best wide receiver group since you've been on campus, mm-hmm. at least on paper. And yeah, again, yeah. That, that, like you just talked about, you know, they obviously have to prove it. But in terms of pinpointing a weakness within the portal and high school recruiting, I don't think, you know, from a realistic standpoint, like obviously they could have gone out and added three five star wide receivers and thrown a couple million dollars at guys in the portal. But realistically, this is about as damn good as you can do if you're Texas Tech in the sense of you go get a guy in Josh Kelly that if anybody watched Pac-12 football last year, he's a top 10 guy out there. And they had a ton of wide receivers that were really, really good, um, in my opinion. Right. Like you think about it from the standpoint of Washington's going to have three guys drafted. I was surprised Josh Kelly didn't go to the NFL. Like that's how good I think he is, but he wants to get another year under his belt. And as a tech fan and somebody that covers the team, I'm more than willing to have him out the 806. Um, Mm -hmm. Caleb payday Douglas, he was starting at Florida. People are going to look at Florida last year and think, Oh, they weren't very good. Like they were there. I always say this Florida in my mind is the most interesting program in the sec from the standpoint of this. I could argue with you each and every year that they are a top 25 roster in college football. Oh, easy. Right? But they'll finish ninth in the SEC. Like, like that's just kind of going to happen sometimes. And so Caleb got hurt last year. He was a starting wide receiver on the outside for a very talented Florida team. He comes back home to Texas. I'm excited about him. Um, And then obviously Micah Hudson – is the guy that everybody wants to talk about, rightfully so. First five-star commit in program history, um, the highest commit in program history. You mentioned, though, an interesting point, and I kind of want to go deeper onto this as we talk about the returnees because I have six must-watch guys in this wide receiver room. We've already talked about three of them, Kelly, Douglas, and Hudson. Those are guys that I think everybody wants to see. The other three guys are Coy Aiken, I think Coy's a stud on the outside. Baron Morton and him have a great rapport. Um, A guy that's underrated, in my opinion, is Jordan Brown. If he didn't get hurt last year, I think he plays a lot more snaps on the outside. And then you mentioned him a little earlier, Dre McCray. And this is kind of the segue into my question here, Lyle. You talked about how guys coming up from the lower level. And Dre McCray, well-known at this point, came from Austin P. First year was really good on special teams. Let's give him his credit there. Really good on special teams, Um, but did struggle as a wide receiver. Do you think that there's going to be a sizable difference? Because you talked about that jump, right? That Austin P to Texas Tech. That's a, that's a sizable jump. Do you think that he gets more, I don't want to say comfortable because I think people can misconstrue the word comfortable with football sometimes but do you think he's more acclimated to the speed involved in the game itself going into year two in the big 12 and he can make a bigger difference when it comes to actually playing on the offensive side and not just special teams and by the way he had some good plays offensively but very sporadic very sporadic and I think that's a three-part answer to that and you know like I want to you know, tell everybody because I know everyone's like, man, he's he's hard. I've been hard on Dre every time. And I think he's a great player. I think he's a phenomenal receiver. I truly do. But I think it's a three part question. Um, number one, I think that he gets better. Um, I think that his skill set that we all know is speed. Right. And I think the biggest thing is like he's fast, but like speed only to me, speed is only speed kills. 100%. But, you know, you got Jakeem Grant speed and you got fast, fast. And I think like being a smaller guy, um, you know, he was known for Austin P going deep, catching the ball, running past people. 
I just don't think that that in at this level, like that's he's not going to, you know, every now and then, but he's not Jakeem Grant, you know, run past people and do that. And if you go back and look at Jakeem Grant's film, it's not a lot of times they're bombing it down the field. There's one small dude that's super fast um, that runs downfield and catches a bunch of balls. And we all know that's the cheetah. Like there ain't no one else under five, eight running that fast and running past people. Like that's just not everyone's fast. Cheetah is just. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. think, um, you know, the, the other two parts of that, too, is quarterback. You know, like, did Cheetah catch a lot of balls this year? Yes, but Miami does a lot of stuff to get him open, whereas when he was with the Chiefs, he was running and Patty was throwing it 80 yards down the field in his hands. Like, so, I, you know, I think it's on B more than two how he performs. And the most important position is the O-line. We struggle with that. So I give him his 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 break on that. Like, you cannot – it doesn't matter how fast you are, how good a route you run. If the O-line don't block and the quarterback don't get you the ball, then, you know, that's the problem. So I think that's a three-part answer as far as do I think he's more comfortable? Yes. Do I think that his skill set – is great in the Big 12. I don't. I think if he goes to SEC, it's a little better as far as skill set because those guys are still top notch. So it's no disrespect, but they we are getting DBs that could cover. We're not getting DBs to tackle. We're not getting DBs like we are getting coverage. DBs is what we like to get, you know. Um, and so I think like his skill set in here is he's really fast. I think he's faster than most, but is I don't think he's fast enough to generally like blow off the top consistently. And I think that's the part where he struggles is he got to get better at the, you know, the mid range being a route runner. Cause when you become a route runner and, and you catch the balls, eventually they're going to have to come up, you know? And I think that's, if he, that's the area that he needs to get better. He becomes a legit crisp route runner catching, getting five yards. Oh, they're going to come up and then it allows them. But I just don't think he's off rip fast enough to get out there. So I think he has a better season, but I think it depends on, uh, like I said, the O-line, of course, the quarterback, but his short game, he's got to get his routes crispy. And I think he's been accustomed to running past people when he got in the Big 12. And I think, you know, Kit tried to use him in that way um, with some play action stuff. And I just, I, I like I said, I think those guys are, are a little faster than people think, you know. And so, but I definitely think he'll have a, a – a, a good season. I think he'll be a big help. I think he'll get a lot of minutes, but I also think it goes back to, you know, the last part, I guess it's how Kitley uses them. Kitley, you know, gets them in them little mid range, maybe some jets, some, some things like that. I think is like what he does. And and that's one thing I'll give to Cliff. We talk about Jakeem, like he ran trick plays at Texas when he ran around and scored. I mean, they gave him jets, they gave him screens. They, they got to let him use his speed in other ways other than trying to beat people deep. You know what I'm saying? So I think he'll be good for us. What's your favorite uh, side when you're having fried chicken? Because you mentioned crispy. I'm curious. What's your favorite side? A side with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You going like wedges? You going strictly mashed potatoes? Like, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Um, okay, go ahead. I'm going to be honest with you. If we're at a black establishment, I'm going sure. to get I'm gonna get greens. Oh, that, uh, that that's what I was about to say as well. Yeah, yeah. Or, I'm not going to KFC and getting anything green. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me let me put that on there. Actually, I would there is uh I went to an establishment, uh, I forgot his name. I had to take a picture with him. Uh it was a young man in Dallas, uh, a white guy, top three greens I've ever had. I forgot what the restaurant was called. Send me that Addy. Send me and, that Addy. I've been looking and, for some good greens, man. It was phenomenal. And he walked out like, you know, I'm sorry, bro. Y'all don't judge me, but I was like, this for sure is a black person. And I walked out and it was a white dude. And he wasn't even that old. And I had to hug him. And I was like, bro, let me get Not a picture. Not salty? And your rest- no, they were fantastic. That's and the I thing like, that bothers me the most about greens. It's like, I think some people just, they're a little too heavy on the salt. Ab- absolutely. And like that, that's, that, that's say, the thing that really bothers you me. You can say who, who does it, brother. Well, we yeah, are. it's my mom. My mom. Well, no, no, no. It's just my mom. We we we, we don't need to throw my anybody else under the bus here, love. It's pretty heavy. No, no. Heavy let, let's my mom's screen is pretty good. I'm going to I'm gonna have to drop you on my mom's screens. They're, I'm going to have to come. They're okay. worth it, brother. I'm down for it. So you're going greens, but like, let's just say it's like a, you're, you're, you're trying to go in like, so there's a restaurant not too far from my house where I like to go and get a two piece. You can pick okay. what kind of what you want in terms of drum, thigh, all that kind of stuff. And then you get one side and a drink, and it's like six bucks. It's actually a pretty good deal. That's a good deal. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, what side are you going with there? Just off rip, you don't know these people. Don't know. 
I probably had to go. Uh, this is really risky. But I'm a risky guy, but I'm probably had to go mac and cheese. How's that risky? I feel like that's conservative. No. Because, or do you feel like potatoes are ser- conservative? Yes, potatoes. Okay. Because okay. you can't mess that up. Like I've had mac oh, and cheese had that some, are really good. Some shitty potatoes recently, brother. Really? Uh, I'll I'll send you a couple addresses. You need to just x How? out Des Bryant. That oh, it's awful. Do, I don't know. Do They're runny. And garlic in there. But they get runny. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a I runny think. guy. But let me ask you a question while we're on this subject. Would you okay. rather have runny potatoes or mac and cheese that's like somebody took some cheese and just dumped it on there? It's not fully in there. And you that, know what that, I'm one, that one. The mac because, and cheese? Yeah, because at least I get pasta. Oh. You, you know can I mean? always pick up the potatoes and let the runniness come out, though. Yeah, but then there's all the flavor. It just tastes like chalk at that yeah. point. That's a good. That's a good conversation. We might need to ask the people what they would. Yeah, do. we might. We might. That's a, that's Let us know really down in the comments. Best side when you get a two piece of chicken. That's good. What's the best side? You don't know. You don't know the establishment because I think the correct answer is greens. Like if you know and trust them, it's greens, one hundred percent in my opinion. But if that's you're going where I struggle with, bro, I have trust issues. Yeah, I, I have trust issues. So for me. And and like I'm a I'm the type of dude. I'm sorry, people, but I'm gonna send it back. If I pay my money and it's not up to par, I would. And my friends talk about me yeah, all the you're time. That but I'm sending it. I'm you're here. that guy. Mm. These greens, they're lacking flavor. Can I trade it out? Let, let me see the mac and cheese for y'all. Put it on there. Wow. No, let that me get the potato. Let me get the potato. I mean, there's yeah. always one. You know what I mean? There's always it's that my, one guy. It's my uh, father's fault, man. Didn't know it was Lyle, but here we are. Um. By the way, on the Dre McCray stuff, as we transition back into talking football, I think he has a better year because you're talking about taking the top off the defense, right? I I would agree in the sense of, hey, his routes need to get a little bit more crisp. Shout out to a good two-piece. But I also think that he will have the opportunity to take the top off of the defense more because safeties will come down and respect Josh Kelly, Micah Hudson, Koy Aiken more. And so that pushes them down already. If Dre beats him off the first step, you're not going to catch him um, in that regard. And that's kind of my argument in the sense of, do I think Dre is going to come out there and have like a thousand yard receiving year? No, but I think he's going to be utilized more to his skill set and be conducive to the offense that Texas Tech is running this year in the sense of Josh Kelly can beat you deep, right? But he's known more as an intermediate guy. Same with Micah Hudson, Caleb Payday Douglas. You have to say the payday. Um, by the way, average candy bar, great nickname. Um, yeah. He can beat you deep, right? But then you've also got guys like Jordan Brown, Koy Aiken. Those guys can beat you in the middle there. And we're not even talking about the tight ends today. We're just strictly talking about wide receivers. They went out and added some guys there too. Um, yes. So I think they did a really good job from the standpoint of, all right, I, I think that it's hard sometimes just as I was actually talking to this about uh, with my buddy the other day. Like, I think the hardest thing – as a coach outside of actually like leading men, right? Like that is a very difficult thing to do to get somebody to actually willingly trust you and follow you almost in a sense, blindly to a degree, but also like you got to show them as well. I understand. But I'll get paid at that. While getting yeah, paid. yeah. 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 That, that's a hard thing to do. I think the other thing that people don't give coaches enough credit for, and there's some coaches that are just, you know, a, Pardon my language. Shout out to Sketch real quick. Pardon my language, brother. Um, don't know if you've seen that on TikTok. But, um, yeah, um, self-reflection. Like, looking yourself in the mirror and just being like, what did I do awful this year? What do I need to be better at? What do I need to prioritize this offseason in terms of making sure my team is in the best possible situation to succeed? I think Texas Tech did that with the wide receivers because last year, obviously the offensive line wasn't up to par. You had quarterback injuries as well, but the wide receiver position didn't do them any favors outside of, you know, Corey Aiken, Dre McCray sprinkled in here a little bit. Like, I mean, you had multiple guys disappear um, last year. And I mean, Jerron Bradley is the guy. I'm not trying to throw one singular guy under the bus, but I know that that's the name people are thinking of, right? Like, and now he's at Boston College playing for Bill O'Brien. What the hell? That's weird <laughs> to say. Um, but it is what it is. Um, overall, though, Lyle, real quick, before we get into our bold predictions, give a grade for this offseason for Texas Tech in terms of improving 
the wide receiver group? A, B, C, D, F, like, let me know you're great. And I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, we didn't talk about this in the pre-production side of things. So just give me a great. Uh, I'd probably say, honestly, I'd probably say a B plus. Um, may, maybe an A minus close. A minus B plus. Uh, and that's simply because I feel like we, I feel like these, like Micah Hudson without a doubt. Like, you know, you can't. First time in history, like, that's freaking awesome. That says a lot by that coaching staff, what Texas yeah. Tech is doing. Like, that says a lot because we've never done that before. And like I said, you know, Mike Leach is considered one of the greatest coaches ever. We never got a five-star. So that in itself is number one. Um, I think, you know, kind of uh, Caleb, Payday, Douglas, I think he's – but, I, you know, I Remember feel the like – Remember Payday. Don't forget payday. it. I ain't going to let you down. <laughs> baby. I will not let you down. You know, I kind of – I feel like he has the ability, but I kind of get that that Bradley vibe as well. Like he he got all the things that Bradley sure. has. Now is he going to show up? So that's why I kind of do that. I kind of feel uh, the the same. My guy from Washington State, Kelly. I think he has the ability to do it. And although he's coming from Washington State, I feel like it's a Dre uh, situation. Like, do I think he's better than Dre? I think he's better than Dre. But I still think it's that same type of situation as um, Washington State played some really good people. You know, they're in, they're in a yeah. But we getting DBs that are fast. We're getting DBs. So like it's it's crispy routes. Like I encourage people to go uh, watch some of these cats has been successful. They run crispy routes. You know, like Amari Cooper, one of the best in the NFL in my opinion. It's because his routes maybe the best speed. ever running See, routes like, specifically. Yeah. Just running routes. Amari's got to be top five. Yes, and C.D. Lamb this year, the route running, that's what pushed him over. Everyone's like, well, he became the number one receiver. No, his routes are – go watch. And I I am a – route. you know me. If your routes are poo cheese, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, poo cheese. Not even poo blue cheese. cheese. Poo cheese. No, poo cheese, brother. How do you feel about blue cheese, by the way? Hate it. Hate, Hate it. it. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't really get the point. Like, it's just extra moldy cheese, right? That's what I'm saying. Go watch it being made. Yeah, like – Cheese is mold in itself most of the time, right? Like, but that one's worse. Like, but you know, yeah, but that one's extra moldy. I didn't ask for extra mold. That's what I'm saying. But I eat at McDonald's too, so I guess that's not fair. It's not even real food. I don't. I don't think McDonald's is bad. Okay, I think real. you just. I think you have to understand what it is. It's not real. Yeah, and and that's fine. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm just saying. I, that's not fair to blue cheese, man. That's not fair for me All to right, do that. Right, that's fair. I get what I get what you're saying now. I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I had trouble putting two and two together there, but I got to the same point. No, no, no. That was me. No, you you clear path. I decided to take a left instead of just go straight. That's on me. I um, yeah, I I would probably give it an A minus. Like I said earlier, I think this is um the most talented group of wide receivers on paper. I do agree. Since you you were on campus, like as a collective whole. Um, because you you and I can disagree on Josh Kelly. That's fine. I think he's one of the most proven wide receivers in college football. Um, I think he's a bona fide stud. Um, mm -hmm. That's what he is, in my opinion. Um, and that's fine. I get it from your perspective. He needs to prove it in the Big 12. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just looking at the roster right now, Lyle. I, I'm going to stop when I – I'm going to let you know at least when I think, okay – this guy doesn't have the potential to make an impact. And I'm going to leave out some of the freshmen outside of Micah because wide receiver, it's very rare that you have a wide receiver come in impact day one. It's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't have, unless you're a freak in the nicest possible way to say a freak like Micah Hudson is. So we'll start. Micah Hudson going to have an impact. Jordan mm -hmm. Brown going to have an impact. Caleb Payday Douglas. Don't you forget it. Um, mm -hmm. Going to have an impact. Kelby Balson going to have an impact. Coy Aiken, going to have an impact. Dre McCray, going to have an impact. TJ West, going to have an impact. Brady Boyd, going to at least be on the two or three deep at a certain position. Will have an impact. Um, you've got Drew Hocutt. He'll be on there. Then you've got Josh Kelly. You've got Hayden Wigington on there. You've got a freshman in LJ Johnson Jr. that I'm excited about. Talk about speed. Price Morgan could have an impact. He's a Juco guy. DJ Crest, another guy I'm excited about. Like, in the sense, I think there's – let's just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten, depending on how you feel, guys. Like where you're like, I feel pretty good if they're in a certain situation. 
And, and I want to shout out my sleeper right now before the season that you did not mention who is my sleeper. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Let me see who I didn't mention real quick. Let me go to the website. Who, who did I not mention? Uh, oh, okay. All right. I think I know who it is. You say does, it. does his first name start with the same uh, letter of his last name? No. Oh, okay. Then I'm out. All right. Go ahead. Mine is Aiden Meeks. Okay. There we go. I I, I, I was between him and Tyson Turner. I just his, didn't know which one he liked. For those you who don't know, his dad is a legend. Yeah. That takes, he's a bad dude. And if you know his father's mindset, like he's going to come talk to my team at least twice this year. Like, his dad was a bad man, and, like, his mindset, the way he goes, like, you know, and he's going to come out and see me. So um, just know we're going to be reminds working. Reminds me of that. Nehemiah Martinez a little bit. I'm telling his you. His skill set. Gonna, that's kind of what he reminds me of. We're going to get right. So you just, I think they did a great job, though, like overhauling yeah. the wide receiver room. I Like, again, from a realistic standpoint, you have and to prove it. But yeah. going and addressing needs, phenomenal yeah. job. And Chandler is really good too. You know, yeah, close, yeah. Close, close to where I'm from, I've, I've watched him since he was a little kid. So um, he's one not to, by any means, not to sleep on. But he's in that same boat uh, as far as like we said, the jump. You know, like Holly is very small, um, and not take away anything from what he done, what he has done. But you know, from a five a six a DB to the DBs he went against, it's it's a tad tad bit different so i think he'll take a time to adjust i want i know i believe he will red shirt but and and he, and tyson i think tyson wanted to look out for it too but like i said just the speed of aiden you know like tech is into speed now you know as well as i know but aiden is extremely fast so um and i know i just said that i'm contradicting myself because i just said that about dre but i think that uh his father's like but knowledge speed will get you on the field Yes. And I think just his his dad, you know, dad plays safety. And I think his knowledge of the game is what's going to separate him. Like his dad knows the game, ran the defense. Like so that that's like like I always tell people when I talk to Crab and Crab kind of put that out for me. He's like, know the defense. Like it changed my game. Like I knew where I was going, where to be, where people were going to be to get to where I need to be faster. And so I think that's the only advantage, not only advantage, but the big advantage he has. His dad going to his dad going to talk to him after the Fair game. Enough. His dad going to let him know. So There you go. All right, before we get out of here, again, we're we're recording this on March 28th, people. We have the right to change our minds. We're talking mm-hmm. right in the middle of spring ball here. Um, Lyle and I are going to give our bold predictions for the Texas Tech wide receivers in 2024. Lyle, what you got, my guy? I think uh, uh, Coy. Coy leads the charge. With the most yards and touchdowns. How many uh, yards are we talking here? Let's get bold. Let's get bold. Come on. How many yards do you think he got? Coy, I'm gonna give Coy. Coy, don't let me down. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go uh, 1100. That's the number I thought you were gonna go with. Okay. Yeah. The first number that popped into my head, full transparency, was 12. But I was like, Nah, he gonna go a little lower. 1100. <laughs> <laughs> you know me well. I just think you know he'll he'll be like when you got that relationship, you know, kind of same with me and Potts. When you have it, it's there. It's not a, it's not a thing you go work on. It's not. It's it's a connection that you have or you don't have. It's Graham and Crab. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's uh, you know, me Potts, some something like that. They just have it. So I think he'll be the number one target. Um, I think. Uh, How second many tutties? Up, you said he leads it in tutties. I say eight. I think okay. eight. What I'm you writing think? this down, by the way. What you think? Yeah, mine's uh. Hold on one second. Let me write this down. And you said eight TDs, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So mine is kind of in a similar vein, but I kind of doubled up on it. I think Texas Tech has two thousand yard wide receivers this year. You do? Um, I do. And I, I, let me guess. The, the funny second- part is. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll let you guess. Yeah, Everyone's gonna be Josh Kelly. Hundred, hundred percent. I knew it. I'm telling you this right now. Like this may be a, even a bold prediction. I think Josh Kelly is a top five wide receiver at worst in the Big Twelve Conference. At worst, I, I am, I'm telling you, like, go watch you. this guy and what he did at Washington State last year against the likes of Oregon State, who had a phenomenal defense. Washington in the Apple Cup. I mean, this guy. 
he he he's one of those ones where like the, I know a lot of people haven't seen him because the West Coast is the worst coast um in a lot of people's minds. Um but and that those games just start so late. But he he's one of those ones. And you know what? I'm telling you right now, when he goes back to Pullman and plays the Washington State Cougars in week number two, he's gonna absolutely ball out. Mark, mark a hundred plus yards, two tutties. Bro is gonna go absolutely nuclear in the Pacific Northwest. Now, you got one. Who do you think the other one is? This this might be the spicy one. The other one that I think is gonna get a thousand yards. No, I think is gonna get a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got uh, the would, first one. No, I thought. Oh, oh. So it's not Koi. It's not Koi. No. Oh wow. Um, let me see here. Who I think that you would say? Just going off of your. Your your average candy bar, I'm definitely going to think you're going to say payday. I'm not going to say payday. Uh, I'm going to say Micah Hudson. No. I think Micah Hudson gets 1,000 yards in year number one. The reason being is this. This is the reason. My, my, my mindset is this. Like, if we're talking about, you know, personnel groupings on the field, okay, you're obviously going to have Taj in the backfield. I think you see a lot more three wide receiver sets this year just because – well, we talked about the wide receivers. They're a lot better this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you're going to have is probably over at X. I think that's probably where Coy is because that's where he's had the best success with Barron early on. Then you flip to the other side of the field. And, oh, by, by, by the way, before we get over there, I think that's on the other side where Coy is. That's where you're going to see the tight end, whether that's, you know, Jalen Conyers, um, Mason Tharp. Do not mm -hmm. forget the name. John Carlos Miller led the FCS. It's a jump in yards per catch for any position mm -hmm. dude's explosive at the tight end spot. But then on the other side, that's where I think things get interesting from the sheer standpoint of Micah is going to be inside. Josh Kelly is going to be on the outside. I think those two together are just going to create nightmares for secondaries where, okay, the play is run for Josh Kelly, right? Let's just say it's run for Josh Kelly. He runs an in route and then Micah is running something outside you're going to see numerous times where everybody goes inside and Mike is just wide open and vice versa. And so I think these guys are really going to complement each other really, really well. So again, it's a bold prediction. I understand that I do, but I think Josh Kelly gets, you said 1100 yards for Coy. That's where I think Josh Kelly ends up. And I think Micah Hudson gets over just a thousand. The crazy part is I almost put three wide receivers over a thousand yards. I did almost put three, and Coy was going to be the third, but I think he just misses it. I think he gets like nine hundred. And I and I agree with like Josh. It, it, my second one probably would have been Josh, even though I just said that. I probably think he's my second one. The thing that the reason why I don't think that um, he will get a thousand yards, Micah. Uh, two reasons: number one, uh, we got a top three running back in the nation. He's going to very get the fair, ball. very fair. Uh, and then number two, like I said, man, it's just like you know with Graham, like if. It comes down to it. Everybody knew who Graham was throwing the ball to. So, you know, like, I just think it comes down True. to your connection. At the end of the day, if he's in trouble, Coy has already proven it. He's already done it. Is Micah great? Yes. Do I believe in him one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. I really – I truly do think he's a baller. But I think, like I said, quarterbacks are always going to go to where their comfort level is. Um, and, and like I said, I, I think, um, like I said, he's proven – like he's proven to be a bad man when the ball, like when it comes to him, he catches it. And I know Michael would too. I know he's faster, uh, probably catches a little better, or I wouldn't say catch a little better, but he's faster, probably more athletic. Um, but those are my two things. I think Taj, we, you know, last year I was like, we could give Taj ball. I think y'all are about to get your wish. Um, so, uh, you know, we're still air raid, but I, I guarantee you, it was, I wouldn't be surprised if we go 60 40 run to. I, you think they go 60 40? I wouldn't be surprised. I that think man, it's closer. I think it's, I think it might be flipped. Mm, and the reason can... being is this I think Taj is going to have the ability to be far more efficient with his carries because teams can't collapse on the get in the box, you know, because they do have to represent and respect those wide receivers I think on the flipped, outside. I'm, I think it's flipped. We run first. Then throw sure. versus you know, but I I think like I said until they prove it, like the, I think that's the same thing we get on like every. It's gonna year. be a fun argument. 
Because, I mean, we won't know until the end of the year. You know, right. but it's going to be a fun argument um, and discussion from that standpoint. But again, Lyle's bold prediction. I don't know how bold it was compared to mine, if we're being honest, but it's whatever. I'll say it anyway. Uh, Koi Aiken will lead the wide receivers in receiving yards and touchdowns with over 1,100 yards and eight TDs. My bold prediction was two Red Raiders will have 1,000-plus yard receiving seasons, and it will be Josh Kelly and the five-star wide receiver, Micah Hudson. We're going to wrap it up there. Lyle, where can the people find you on the good old Twitter machine? Hey, man, find me on the Twitter at uh, Coach L-L-E-O-N-G. And you can find the man that makes this all happen. You can follow me at RCMB323, Lyle being humble as usual. Listen, we're going to have more football content on here. I hope everybody understands, like, basketball season's a lot. It's a lot. There's a lot going on, just like football portal season. It took over as well. That's just how it goes. Um but you'll be seeing Lyle more here on the channel. I knew everybody was asking Lyle. I had no joke. At least 20 people asked me, hey, we got to get Lyle on here to talk about these wide receivers, man. And I'm like, I, I promise we will. It's basketball season. Gotta it's just stay patient with me, please. Like, I promise we will get him on here once Tech is out of the tournament. Like, we, we will do it. And they're like, RC, we need it. You know, that Dave Chappelle, that Dave Chappelle hey. type Ooh. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so this better be doing numbers. I'm just saying it better be yeah. doing numbies because I'll be looking. Lyle will be looking. And the easiest way to help more people see what's going on with the Texas Tech wide receiver room is this. Three steps. Like mm -hmm. the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on everything mm -hmm. Texas Tech football all year long right here on the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube. Double other channels. Triple other channels. Quadruple. I don't know what comes Ooh. after five because I wasn't a math major, but damn it, you get the point. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to join the Back to 12 squad.